Okay, um, so as you all probably know, my name is Austin Reuter, and yes, I do in fact have all those wonderful things, but but I'm proud of it. Um, early, earlier this year, there was a big debate over Common Core, and the main reason that I'm uh, up here on the stage is because there wasn't really any perspective from the student's point of view. So I was born May 13th, 1997, with really long black hair. The first thing the doctor said was, somebody getting Barbara here. Barbara in here. This boy definitely needs a haircut. Um, my mom put her, well, put me in her Montessori preschool, and, and then I moved on to public school. And it was right around this time I was diagnosed with, with all those quote-unquote disabilities. Um, so y'all know what ADHD is, probably, but Asperger's syndrome is a form of autism where I have trouble reading social cues and overly obsess on various things. But since that diagnosis, I've become much, much more social and, and quite frankly, probably made a lot less people mad. <laughs> and, and, um, you know, because I've beaten the disease, not the disease, but, but the disability, and, but before I had, but before I did that, I had to deal with a lot of stuff. After spending seven years in Helena, Montana, um, um, my mom and I moved to Dillon, and this was a period of my life where my mom had to constantly fight the school to accept my individualized education plan, so I could learn at the best of my ability. Even when it was accepted, um, uh, one of the teachers attacked my my learning style, and it didn't really stop there either. Uh, the students kind of picked up on that, and I actually ended up figuring out the maximum distance I could venture from the playground aides before starting getting singled out. <laughs> After three to four years of that, things got better. Better, but then we moved, well, moved to the Gallatin Valley, and I started going to a small Christian school kind of far out there, and and it was literally hell on earth for me. 99% of my class loathed me simply because I didn't grow up with them. But then I went to Belgrade High, Belgrade Middle School, and and I actually graduated middle school with honors. Um, so now that I've had, well, so now that I've had a couple years to think about my success, I mainly attribute to my amazing teachers at Belgrade, Bozeman, so on and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so now let's take a little break from my story and let's just like get like a crash course in the history of school. The first form of school was in ancient Egypt where they taught an early form of hieroglyphics. And then later on the churches did something more like that. And it was mainly for the rich and wealthy. But there was this one, well, uh, one artist that did, well, Michelangelo, well, not that Michelangelo, but you get where I'm going. And, um, and so his father was a part of the banking business for seven gen his family was in the banking business for seven generations, but he failed and had to get a lesser paying government job, but Michelangelo still went on to do amazing things. And it wasn't until uh, uh, child labor laws that K through 12 education for the masses became a possibility. And then came the oh so wonderful No Child Left Behind and Common Core. And, and, and there are two views to this debate, <laughs> to this debate, um, the far left or whatever. Well, it might say, might say, Common Core focuses too much on, on the test and doesn't build on uh, actual skills beyond the classroom. And the other side says, oh, it makes it equal playing field. Well, to be quite honest, they're both right. We need a, well, we need an even playing field, and, and we also need a. Sp education that goes beyond preparing for those big, oh-so-wonderful oh tests. And, okay, so let's go back to my life story. When I, when I have, what I have learned over, over my 12, 12 years and after thriving for only the second time in my life, it's mostly due to the amazing teachers at Belgrade Middle School as well as Mount Ellis Academy. And, those teachers achieved great things by making the material relatable while still uh, fulfilling the standards set by, set by the government. 
And um, so as William Arthur Ward says, not this guy, another person, um, the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. And while I'm saying quotes, uh, uh, age does not... Def- Age does not define maturity, and grades do not measure intelligence. And because all throughout my life, I had not so good grades, and I was told my educational skill was unsatisfactory. And I learned throughout those years that, yes, there will be tests, and there will, and, and there will be failure, but it's up to you to get back up and find someone who help you. And, and if nobody cares, find someone who does. Um, and, and, uh, I attribute my success and my ability to be up on this stage speaking to you guys, to the amazing teachers both at Belgrade School as well as Mount Ellis and, and all the teachers throughout the years. So, in my experience, uh, I think the good, the good way that, a decent way to better the system was, ha- yes, have have decent standards, but like have it where teachers get the standards, and it's up to them to apply it in a way that fits their class and their school. And on top of all that, the most pertinent is we need teachers that, like Michelangelo, would 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 look at a block of marble, or in this case, a student, and walk and opposed to thinking, what can I make out of this? Look at it and think, and think what is inside, waiting to come out. Thank you.